Welcome one and all. This is WESN Content Capital, Face of Sports. And we are scheduled, because Sean Michael Small is alongside me, to talk the NFL. And we will be talking the NFL. But we've got some breaking news here for you in Trinidad and Tobago. Because today, we had our very own Akeem Stewart taking part in the discuss. Well, joining us all the way from Paris is Mickey Ruben. Mickey, um, welcome. Welcome. Mickey, tell... Are you hearing us? Right. Tell the people of Trinidad and Tobago what happened today in terms of Akeem Stewart. Well, today in a work and free stadium in Paris, Trinidad and Tobago secured a silver medal by means of Akeem Stewart in the Discus F64. That means a piece of the Eiffel Tower will be coming back to Trinidad and Tobago. T tell us about how it feels. Tell us about how it went for him in terms of the throws. Tell us, give us, give, give us some of the excitement I'm hearing in your voice. Yeah, well, with all that, with all that has been happening, one of the things that I, as I said earlier, when we had the last interview, the captain, that he just wanted to try and have an atmosphere where we can make sure that the the way that I can make sure we can share that we don't have that statement. from the perspective of what happens now, I know he has to go to, and tell us what is, uh, uh, of course he's got the silver medal, what happens now to him? Is he being tested? What's going on? Uh, yes, so right now, um, I feel like he's finished because he has to do some control. So he is going to do some control of his law until that process is ending. And the topic is not a start, but we are so close, we should probably get to the next four or five minutes. Right, the open control of someone just follow him until then. He go through the uh, medal ceremony and then head back to the open control. And then, of course, what about the medals? I know today you'll collect the medal too, as well. Is all that in the plans? Yes, the medal ceremony is going to be within the next three or four minutes. Oh, wow. So, how are you feeling? How are you and the team feeling? How, I mean, how, how, what, I mean, what, what how are you feeling? Well, we are, we are very, very, very close to this camp. Um, the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Parliament Association, Sri Ramasa, called me um, to, to express the congratulations. The coach is happy. I am happy and I'm happy. happy. I want to happy to happy that everybody in the camp is comfortable. Going into today's event, how did you feel? Did, did you anticipate? I know we spoke last week. How did you feel? No, we were we were expecting a medal, but we didn't want to say what color or what kind because we didn't want to put any pressure on the athlete going in, knowing that he could be the only option for Trinidad to come out with hardware out of uh, Paris, right? Um, we were expecting probably even a little higher color if the weather was a bit dry because by the time he got to a couple of throws, he had some, some pain in the knee, right? So, but no, no excuses because he was happy with the performance. From the perspective of, 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 of you as, as, as the manager of the team and in terms of the, the, the connections, the family connections, how has the response been so far from Trinidad and Tobago? I heard how the response was from, I didn't hear from who. Right. No, in, in terms of the feeling, I'm, I'm sure you've been in communication with others in Trinidad and Tobago as well as ourselves. So how, how has it been? No, everybody has been sending their congratulations. Um, apparently, Chase are just happy to, to, have, to get a medal. Yes. All right. Well, well Mickey, we, we, I mean, 
as much as we want to talk to him. So as soon as you get an opportunity, you just send me a message here and we will connect back with you and we will talk with the man himself, Akeem Stewart. So I, wait, I await your call. You just send me one message and we will call you direct and we will talk again with Akeem. But we thank you for the great news today, a silver medal for Trian Bego in the Paralympics by the man himself, Akeem Stewart. How, how long ago did, I mean, Go ahead. Talk to me later. Take care. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. All right, people. There you have it. You heard it here. He's going for the medal ceremony right now. How you, how you feel? How you feel? I mean, uh, grateful that, that one of our athletes was able to pull through. Um, concerned that some people might want to undersell it. Oh, it's not the Olympics. It's Paralympics. Well, to some extent, at the end of the day, people are competing. It might not have the same pool of athletes, but it's still a competition. And yes, of course, in a lot of cases, some of these athletes, it's not that they wanted to be in this position, but it's a chance for them to compete. It's a chance for them to, to I guess you could say, show some national pride. And, and it's something that we should celebrate, you know? It's not a consolation prize. It is just one more of our athletes that, that was able to go and achieve I guess you could say another part of his own big dream because it's not his first Olympics, no, right? No, so, correct. so and and, and the, 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 it's ironically maybe it's poetic that this is the silver lining of our Paris experience. Yes, certainly. And one athlete alone we had, Akeem Stewart, and hopefully all things being equal, we will be able to talk with him a little bit later. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to start the discussion on the NFL. Shawn Michael Small, the action begins today with the defending champions. Yes, the defending champions, they are in action. The man himself, Patrick Mahomes, he and his team, they are ready to see if they can make it four titles. He already has three. Three in a row. Three in That's a row. That's a big story. All right, three in a row, three in a row. Three in a row. He, he wants to surpass the man, Tom Brady. Take a short break, we'll be back. It's a happy Thursday here at WESL. We just got the great news from Mickey Rubin out there in Paris. Trinidad and Tobago's Akeem Stewart has got a silver medal in the L64. That's a category L64 discuss. A silver medal for him, and according to him, Sean is alongside me, according to Mickey Rubin, if the conditions were not so rainy, unlike the sun we have here, who knows, things could have been different. Sean, Sean good to have you here with another trailblazing movement for Trian Tobago. I, and he's from Tobago! Must make you happy. Anyway, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, well, I mean, like I said, uh, you know, this is the silver lining for Olympics. We have an athlete. And I mean, it's interesting that his discipline does not overlap with any of our other athletes traditionally that we send yes, up. Yeah. Um, but then it begs the question, to what degree did he basically have to forge his own path like Keshawn Walcott? How many javelin throwers have Trinidad Tobago produced? Even after, you know, where is the setup? Oh, well, we have this thing. Is, it, is there some unique aspects of our culture, of our he also chose. I must tell you, yeah. he also chose the javelin as well. But what has happened to him is that all because of... Because as he has advanced in age, the injury right. has got worse. It right. has become more difficult for him. Right. So, so now, so, I mean, it's even more spectacular that he had to transition. Yes. And again, we're seeing success in our discipline. Granted, of course, this is not, obviously not the same as if it was in the mainstream Olympic success where um, the individual athletes don't have specific challenges yes. to para-athletes. But some but, would say this is, this is even more difficult. Yeah? It, right, right. Because this is actually no you have to train with a challenge. Train with a challenge in a, in a slightly different sport. In a slightly different so sport. So where is, we have success yeah. in these various disciplines and there's no follow through and it just goes to no, show. No, there's no follow through because you're right because Akeem Stewart has been represented in Trinidad Bego for the longest while as the only one. Right. So when he goes, and, what and, happens? And when he say for the longest while, it, it, I think it's at least as long as yeah. Walcott, right? At least as long as, over, over, eight, or his, ten, over eight or ten years. Yes, his so first been Olympics there might have been yeah. the same one yeah, where yeah, Walcott yeah. won the gold. Yeah. And where is the follow-up? Uh, we're not serious about sports. And it's a shame because here, Walcott is an example. This is how I did it. You could do it too. You might not do it exactly the same way. Akeem is the same way. Akeem is the same way, not just for discus, but also for para-athletes. Yeah. This is how I did it. 
This is, these are the steps that I did. You have to maybe modify it for your specific situation, obviously, I mean, just different sports, but still. But we don't take advantage of, of our success. You know, we've had the, the time difference between Hazy Crawford, Otto Boulder, and, and um, Richard Thompson, to some degree. It's not as though, because we had a system in place for a track, no, it's not. They did it on their own. No, they didn't. And at what point now as a society are we going to stop being, stop taking our athletes for granted? Because I feel to some extent that's what we're doing. We're well, taking I, their talent I for granted. I don't know if we, when they say we, who, who are you including this week? I think, well, obviously the authorities. Oh, okay. But then also to some extent the nation. Yes. Because it's not as though the country is saying, hey, or your politician, stop doing what you're doing. Then but 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 John, if you go down, you it, might be saying that. No, but no. You are one but if you voice. go down that road, it, that doesn't only include sports. Of course. So that's of so, course. So then we to go. Be fair. Say, yeah, to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. There's not talking point. There's yes, not talking point. Right. 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 But, so but, the, the but I hear your point. I hear your point. And I totally agree with you. But let's switch. Today is the restart of the NFL season. Our expert, Sean Michael Small. Twelve months later, he's still not himself. He, I think he, he he's trying to recover. Very very much trying to recover. Listen. My team is already competing for bottom two, which, which is good for April, but bad for now. It's very sad so now. So tell us a little bit, Sean, your expectations looking at this season. What are your expectations? The first match is tonight. Tonight, the defending champions in action. What are your thoughts? I hate to say this because so much of the field has disappointed me. So right now, I think the biggest storyline is, is Mahomes going to three-peat. Right. Because nobody has done back-to-back-to-back. Jordan did it in basketball, but no one has done it in the NFL in the modern era. I think Lombardi did it, but his first win might not have technically been the Super Bowl. Right. He, he won the first two Super Bowls, and I think it was Kansas City or Minnesota. I think it was Kansas City that won the, the third, right. right? So, uh, and then of course they have the NFL championships, the AFC championships, when they were separate leagues before that and all of that history, which I, I myself am not that versed into. So who has won it back to back to back? Montana has four, but he didn't do it back to back to back. Same thing with Steelers and, and, and their crew that won it in the 70s. Same thing with the Cowboys. They had a break thanks to the Niners coming in, right? Um, same so thing with are the you Patriots. Seeing that, are you seeing that a possibility this season? Well, one of the things that we looked at last year was look at the teams that were, that were rolling. They looked like they were going to, you know, really cement themselves and their legacy as as good teams of the current period. And arguably, I, I, I would say most of them were disappointing, right? That's what gave room for like the Houstons to come up and surprise everybody. The Ravens crumbled in the playoffs. The Eagles crumbled in the, in, in, throughout the season. They were shell of what they were before. And there's questions if, because they lost Fletcher Cox, the, the, the defensive veteran leader, right? Can they get back to what they were. When we talk about them in Super Bowl, their defense, they were like, they had so many pass rushers, I, I couldn't count. And now it's like, what defense? I don't see a defense. So who is there to stop Patrick Mahomes from getting his third Super Bowl? Arguably, the main issue that the Chiefs have had for the last two years is not another team giving them trouble. The main issue they've had is themselves having slow starts, having wide receivers that drop balls. But I think the key part is Mahomes can't affect the defense directly. So if the defense is as good as it was last year, Mahomes have, has proven last year, listen, my guys, I, you could surround me with a set I never was and never will be. Once I have like one or two guys like Kelsey or whoever I could rely on in critical moments, I am right now, Brady retired, I am the one that takes that top spot. And I don't think there's a debate. It is, it is, it is actually kind of sad. This, there's not even a debate right now. I don't think anybody would put any of the crop, including Aaron Rodgers, ahead of Patrick Mahomes. It doesn't matter to some degree how bad the players around him on offense are. He could compensate for it. So, so the road is right. wide open. So the new additions to all the teams, giving the new additions to all the teams. Are there any new additions, whether it be at quarterback, to the draft, or otherwise to a trade, that you feel could impact in such a way to prevent Kansas City Chiefs to from winning? To prevent? No. No. Or the, or the teams that are looking, that a lot of the analysts are looking to, it's not new quarterbacks. Um, K 
Caleb Williams, he's not, no one is saying that he's going to challenge for that top spot. Some people have the Bears going very high. I am not sold. That roster has to actually prove that they could do it before you're going to tell them. I don't care so what... So how, how can anyone challenge, based on what you've just said, Sean Michael Small, challenge Kansas City? Should we just give them the, the, the trophy one time? Obviously, you still have to play the games. You know, you could get untimely injuries. You know, this could be the year when everything catches up to Mahomes, when he drops. But they got, they got new pieces, so we have to see how these guys do, right? Kelsey, this could be the year where his health declines enough that it slows him down, right? Um, it's, 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 it's going to happen. We just don't know if this is the year. I'm not going to bank on it being this year because we saw the drops already. We saw the issues that they had, but they had the intangibles, right, to pull out the victory. Although, again, I would argue some of the other teams couldn't get out of their own way. I think the Browns at the end of the day, the Sean Watson experiment, is for all intents and purposes over. That contract was more or less, when everybody looked at the contract and it was funny, how do you give someone this much guaranteed money, whether he's injured or not, the, the, kind, of, the kind of weight that you're putting around the neck of your team in order to do so. I don't think it was healthy for the organization and no matter how much money you're getting, if your team is left in an unhealthy position because your contract is, is, is just too much for them to bear, I don't think that ever does your career any favors in the long run. Yeah, you're earning money up front, but you just cut short your earning potential. So who are the heavy hitters? Lamar has to prove he could even beat the Chiefs, right? His record against the Chiefs. Ironically, there is a rock, paper, scissors going on between the Chiefs, the Bengals, and the Ravens, where the Ravens could beat up on the Bengals. But Joe Burrow has shown that He's not afraid of Mahomes. He might be one of the few quarterbacks that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mahomes, right? It's if his team and he could pick at the right time in the playoffs to do so. But he did it already. Not to say that he has, that he has a great record. So the question is, if, if he could still do it, who will knock out who first? Will the Ravens get to him and potentially knock motivated? him out first? Do you feel that Patrick Mahomes is motivated enough? I think... When you're winning things easy, I, I'm wondering. So, so here's the thing. He had to have been motivated enough to win last year because it wasn't easy. Yes. When your receivers are dropping balls like that on you and you're frustrated with them, but notice how he, it never turned into a point where he lost the team as the team captain. No one ever questioned that he was the leader of the team and the locker room didn't blow up because it looked bad. And other teams were in a position to capitalize on the Chiefs' weakest moments within the last three years and they couldn't. And when it reached the playoffs, what happened? They looked so much better in some ways than some of the years previously with regards to how they rose to the occasion and exceeded the expectations of all the drops, of all the bad play in the past. The defense kept them in games and Mahomes kept their offense in games and that was enough last year. Is it gonna be enough this year? Well, again, there could be matchup issues. So then the question comes into, well, which, who gets the, their bad matchup first? Because potentially speaking, the Ravens could knock the Bengals out of the playoffs for the Chiefs or out of the running for the playoffs for the Chiefs. And then now the Ravens had a, have a plan for the Chiefs. They might, they might have a plan for the Chiefs with one of their newest additions, but they have to not do what they did in the last game of their season last year, forget about the running game and play into the hands of the Chiefs and look as though they'd had no idea what they were doing game plan wise because it, w it was almost like a gimme. It was, it was disappointing because I feel as though if I was Patrick Mahomes, in some respects, yes, I'm happy. You beat yourselves. You make the mistake with your game plan. But to some extent, I'm like, this is how the game is going to go. You're just going to pee the bed this badly with your, with your decisions and just make it easy. Well, all right. I mean, the game is hard. I'm not going to, you know, no football player is going to complain about the easy ones because the risk of injury, the physical tool, you will take the relatively easy ones when you can get it, right? But as a fan, I was very upset with how some of those playoff games went. And the Ravens after, Lamar is a great player, but we had this discussion off air. Outside of Mahomes, everybody else, if they want to be in the Hall of Fame, outside of Mahomes, Rogers, and Stafford, they have to prove it. Okay. Two of those guys are old, so they, they prove it. I'm only going to put Rogers. I know you want to put Stafford because he won a Super Bowl, but I still say that Stafford has some work to do, obviously, because I, Russell Wilson would have won a Super Bowl as well and also reached a final. So I, my, my, my opinion is if you're including Stafford, you should include Russell yeah, Wilson. Yeah, Wilson, 
was the second half of his team. Stafford was brought into no, the Rams no. okay, just no, no. for that purpose. So that people can understand what you've just said. Yes. He acted this way. When Russell Wilson's team won the Super Bowl, was he the quarterback? He was the quarterback. Right. When Stafford won the Super Bowl, was he the quarterback? Yes. And that's all I am. Yes, but what... So what, what do the record book show? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What do the record book let show? Let me say what I want to... No, no, let me say what I have to say. No, answer my point, Let me say what I have to say. Go ahead. Because, because no one looks to the fifth guy. Yes, he was a starter on the Bulls roster. He wasn't the primary reason why Jordan has six rings. Most Jordan people, is the primary reason, well, right? So let me ask the you primary another, reason no, no, why no. the Seahawks... Let me ask you another, another way. Do you believe that when people talk about Russell Wilson as the quarterback, do they remember who was the quarterback that would have won the title or do they remember the other players? When they look at Russell... No, they look at the other players. Because when they you look at Russell look at Wilson, players. when they look at Russell Wilson, they look to his seasons afterwards when his numbers no, and look his at, statistics were better. Look at that. Time time time. You look at if that. you looked at that game, did Andre, Russell Wilson Andre, be, no, Andre, no, Andre, answer Andre. Answer me one question. Did Russ, I only go in on facts, right? Did Russell let Wilson, me, let, let me did say Russell the rest Wilson, of the facts. Let me say did the rest Russell of the facts. Wilson help his team to another Super Bowl final? Andre. You could have put yes Baker no. Mayfield on that team yes and no. they would have you won see, the Super Bowl. You see, you, 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 no, 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 you, no. The point is, Andre, you could did, they, did, did Russell Wilson, let me ask, because you know people, one thing about Sean is, Andre, he let not me, answering the question. No, I, th he was a quarterback. No, no. And did, he was carried. He no. was carried. Did, did his team reach two Super Bowl finals? Yes. Did Matthew Stafford team reach two Super Bowl? Well, no, no. Uh, you know why? You know why? Why did why did um why did Russell Wilson lose? Because he threw an interception on the one All yard right. line. Okay, okay. Wait, okay. hold on, hold on. Let me get this off my chest. Right? Let right. me explain. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Peyton Manning broke the single season records for touchdowns that season. The passing single season record that season was setting offensive records. This was the record breaking offense. It's a pass. Brady and Moss, right? They go to the Super Bowl. And what happens? The Seattle defense shut them down completely. It, wa it wasn't even close. Russell Wilson basically could have taken his time and sip his tea because once he did not make catastrophic mistakes, it was automatic. He would have scored more points than Manning, right? It was automatic because he literally did so not you, have to worry about Manning scoring. Man. Russell Wilson never had to worry you for that entire he, game. But, but, he, but for he that could, entire no, no, game. But he could have made a mistake. It might not have been enough for the Broncos to win that game. Uh, they, it was such a blowout. It was such All right, a mismatch. You are that could be ridiculous. So you, so you are discrediting that is man. A, He had a Hall of Fame defense almost the man, you like are that. It's the 2000 Ravens. It's the you it's the 86 Bears. You are it's man. the Legion of Boom. You are right? discrediting man. With... Marcus Bennett, he was not the driving force. He was you, even the second driving but force. But it doesn't matter. He has, he has a Super Bowl ring. He was like 10th in line of importance Hold on that on. team. In your opinion? Yes, he has a Super Bowl ring. In your opinion? Yes. Right. Yeah, Matthew Stafford was the, right. was, was the first or Matthew second Stafford player Matthew Stafford has only on reached team. one Super Bowl final, and he want to put him in the same class. Hey, 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 hey. Look what happened to the Broncos. Hold on. Look what Russell Wilson did to trying, the Broncos. I'm trying to make an explanation. Look what Russell Wilson did to the Broncos. <laughs> your explanation is weak. <laughs> How can it be weak? If you put it, I'm doing this on facts. Russell Wilson this had like man, two good seasons as a passer. This man's not dealing with facts. One man reached two Super Bowl finals on one occasion, his team won, on the other occasion, he didn't win. He was carried the other both man, times. Well, he was matter, carried both times. In your opinion. He was carried both the, times. Uh, they put the, the ball, they put... The, you, the can other, ask, you can ask Richard Sherman and Master and Lynch this question today. They put the ball in Russell Wilson's hand to win the second Super Bowl, but, and man, he gave it away. He gave it away. Me, he was me. outplayed. By who? Not Tom Brady? No. Well, actually, actually, no. I, I would argue that he was... Playing almost as good as Brady Which in that team game. he played against? Not Tom Brady's he team? He played the Patriots, yes. Oh, come on, man. Oh, God. He played against Tom Brady and he compared him. You see where he lost the argument right He could have won. He could have beat Tom Brady. Is Tom Brady not the best play quarterback so far that we know? Yes, but he can't okay. lose. All right. Talk done. Talk done right there. Thank you, Sean Michael Small. So you're saying that's Brady's greatest Thank you, right? Sean. We're going to take a it. short break. Take a short break. When we come back, Russell we're going to look at all not. of, well, some of the... 
He's speculation. not even on the list of elite quarterbacks and Matthew Some Stafford is, of right? Some speculation. Not my the list. Top. The list you found. No, no, no. The no, list I, you found. I found the list. I don't, I, that he doesn't mean I agree with it, you know. That doesn't mean I agree with it. Right. You can take Matthew you, Stafford you, away. You're not well, putting Russell you Wilson agree on. With, you agree with every list you find? No. Well, right. All right. We take a short break. On this list day, we'll be back. Welcome back, welcome back. We continue to celebrate Akeem Stewart. It's a silver medal for Trayon Bago today in the L64 Discus at the Pari Pari Paralympics in Paris. Yes, silver medal for him, silver medal for Trayon Bago, and according to his, the manager of the team, the chef de mission, I should say, uh, Mickey Rubin, who spoke to us a few moments ago live here on WESN. There is a the picture. There is a man who has got it for Trina Bago. The silver medal, Akeem Stewart. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Josh. And also thank you, Neil, for giving us this chance. So there you are, having a look at him. Sean Michael Small, Akeem Stewart from Tobago. So he's made Tobago proud, just like Sean Michael Small. So certainly doing well. And congratulations to him and all of the team. Now, what we're going to do is look at some of the quarterbacks. I want to start, uh, as Sean mentioned, there's a list of 10 quarterbacks. They rank from number 10 upwards. So let's go. Let's start with number 10, and I'll get Sean's opinion on it. 10, Sean, your friend, Aaron Rodgers. No friend of mine. I always hated the comparisons with him and Brady. I always appreciated more the comparisons with Brady and Manning because he was touted as the physical, talented, the most physically talented quarterback of the time. And then Mahomes came and kind of supplanted him on that front. So Mahomes was the next Aaron Rodgers, except Mahomes' career has already eclipsed Aaron Rodgers' career. The thing with Rodgers is he's had longevity. He's an older player. I think he might be 40 this year, right? Um, he's coming back from an injury. He already does not have the best reputation. He has apparently... Um, stayed away from mandatory training camp. I'm surprised. Right? Um, mandatory team activities. It's not as though he's still on the Packers. So, arguably, when um, Jason Kelsey retired, he was upset because, at least in his position, we install this stuff every year. It's the same thing every year. Why are we going through this process like if we're kindergartners having to learn how to the ABCs every year? He's not in a position where he's in the same team that he's been in for the last 10 to 15 years where it's the same old hat. Right? Brady did not do that. So there's always these things. How he interacts with his teammates, you know, the, the kind of leader he is. You always hear rumblings of things in the background. So for him being an older player who is supposed to be looked at as a Hall of Famer, the, the elite guy coming in to help change our program, they can't discipline him. Is this his, is this his one and only year chance, you think, if he feels he's out? You know, that's hard, to, that's hard to say because Brett Favre went from the Jets to the Vikings okay. and when he was with the Jets, he had like a bad injury, I think, of the bicep or one of the tendons in his bicep. So he didn't look good at the end of that year, but he had to go to the Jets because the Packers didn't want to trade him to a divisional rival. But then it gave him the chance, since the Jets cut him, it gave him the chance to pick where he wanted to go. So the thing is, there probably would be a team if he got cut or something happened along those lines, even if it was for injury, because Favre was 40, right? I think he played with the Vikings when he was 41. There's probably a team that would be willing to have him as a starter next year, right? To some extent, it kind of depends on his play. The thing about Favre is he was always uh, an agreeable guy, right? He had his own detractors too on his personality and leadership style, but I think Rodgers has more rumors waking against him, which have not been dispelled necessarily yeah. by his personality and his attitude, and attitude. I, right? I, I think I agree with you there. Right, right. and when you're coming into a new team now, you don't have time to, 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 to go through that, that like a process. He doesn't look like the hugging kind. No, right? He's <laughs> not the hugging kind. And as a yeah. quarterback, you're a point yeah. guard. Yeah. You're not a center if you use basketball teams. Sure, you're, not, you're not a striker. If you use football teams, you're not a point guard or shooting guard. Or, or, you're, you're a point guard, sorry. Yes. Which means you're a distributing point guard. You're not a Steph Curry, right, or Clay Thompson. You're a distributor. You need your team to rally behind you. You need your offensive lineman to want right. to protect for you. So let's and see. if he doesn't have that, and then, of course, he could be rusty, and he's coming off an Achilles at 40. Wow. Let's see, let's see what happens with him. All right. Let's have a look at it. The number nine. This is the rankings. Uh, Jalen Hurts, the Philadelphia Eagles. He has a lot to prove. Last year did not look good. 
The year before was good. The year before was good, but la you see the problem is, even though the defense collapsed last year, they started yeah. off winning and people just assume, oh, things are, it, it's okay. They're finding a way to win. The problem was, when your record includes a lot of near close wins, right? It also means that it, it wouldn't have taken much for them to be losses. And eventually, things kind of just fell off the apple cart. And winning... Injury? Did injury affect him? He no, I don't think it was injury. What happened was winning cures all problems. They lose, lost some players, though. They lost some players. They lost their inside linebackers yeah. last year, right? Yeah. And that affected their yes. defense. Yes. They lost some of their pass rushers, and now they lost another one, a big one. The thing is, winning cures a lot of problems, but then the reverse is also true. Losing could cause things that would not have otherwise been problems in the locker room to be problems, yes. right? So now the question is, I, I do think their culture did not rise. Like, this is the opposite to the Chiefs. Not only did they lose to the Chiefs, but culturally, the Chiefs had adversity. We rose to overcome it, right? Maybe you could have said it was, it, it was at the risk of being a little too late. The Eagles did not necessarily do so, and they lost Jason Kelsey. Now, they are expected to still have one of the best offensive lines in football. They are expected to have a good running game. They are expected to have a good passing game. The defense, we don't know. I think this is a case where we need to, we need to, we need to see it. But the other thing we need to see is, does Jalen Hurts have the character, the strength of will now to not just be, ooh, I am skilled at playing the game of football from the quarterback position, but being like a Kobe, like a Jordan, like, hey, adversity comes, who gets, who, who gets the ball at the end? Who puts the game on their back? They had a, they had a, I saw a clip, somebody asked that to Jordan um, at the Olympics, the first Dream Team Olympics, and he looked at the guy like if the guy was asking him the most bizarre and foolish question. Who gets the ball for the, for the game winning shot? Me. You know, it wasn't a, who, 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 you know, you are stupid. He, he, he almost looked like legitimately confused. Why are you asking me this question? Mahomes is that guy. Burroughs, we've seen flashes of that guy, right? If we want to compete because the season is long, even if you don't have to deal with Mahomes, if you want to win, you have consistently, you have yes. to learn how to be that guy. He has to prove it now because he had, what, one good season, two good seasons, a lot of guys. Cam Newton had a great season. A long career, he had a, a few good seasons, one great season. That's, that, he has no Super Bowl rings, right? If you want to win consistently, that's what the fan base wants. They don't want you to be a one and done, you know? So you're not holding out much hope for him, Sean? No, there is hope. There is hope. But to, to be fair, though, I was never completely sold that he is all that he was cracked up to be. That they, that, that Even though he reached the Super Bowl finals? A lot of people have reached the Super Bowl finals. Uh, yeah, no, no. Yeah. Point, point noted. Point taken. All right, let's go. Number eight in terms of the rankings. Th that's it. There's hope for him. There is Here's hope for your him. boy. The boy I, you love. I think he's underrated. Is he elite? That, I mean, I'm not willing to, he to put my... He's overrated, in my opinion. I don't know about 36, that one. 36 years I don't know old. About no, go that ahead, one. go ahead. You go ahead. No, I, I, I think with the Rams, they lost Aaron Donald. So that's going to affect him because his defense... You, he is on the team that lost the best player in football. So it's, it, it's going to be interesting to see if they can compensate for that. We're, and, and we're not talking about, ooh, he is like the best player statistically, but there are a lot of players close. It's like, no, 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 no. This guy was considered like he was a freak among freaks. Stafford now has to be aware of that. When he's playing on offense, he doesn't have that as much leeway as he might have had the year before because they lost a big piece on the other side of the ball. And, and this matters. It's like this push and pull with regards to football. You don't directly affect the other side of the ball and did vice versa, but they, it matters. Did they play better last season with Puka Nakua as the main Mean I don't know if they point. played. I don't know if they played better. I think they played just as well. Okay. I think the problem was what happened was so they didn't have Cooper Cup early and then they got him later, and it makes me think because Puka Nakua was a rookie. Yes. So to some extent they didn't. They might not have known what they had. Yes. So my fear was we have these players. Both of these guys they kind of play short to intermediate routes, and it's easy that Cup went down and for Puka who was proven himself, we didn't know that he could do it, but he stepped up and proved himself to do it, stepped into the role that was open and available because he had the skill set. But our game planning, our, our, our installations of our, of, our, of our playbook possibly did not include plays that would have taken advantage of having two guys with the same skill set of that particular type of skills. So when Cooper Cup came back, 
Pukunakua kind of disappeared a little bit, and I was a bit disappointed in that until I realized just today, kind of thinking about it, well, when would they have had a time to develop their playbook? Because Pukunakua wasn't just a rookie. He was like a low draft pick or something like that, right? So now that they had a full off season, the hope is, okay, we have two guys. They're not necessarily burners. They're not necessarily physical freaks, but they are smart football players, capable football players, they probably should be able to do something in the vertical aspect of the passing game. If they could just figure out how to capitalize on having both of them on the field at the same time, that should help their offense look a lot better. The problem, though, is that it is kind of interesting because Patriots had to go through this problem for a while. When you're kind of depending on more than one player that has that kind of style, you do run into like matchup problems because essentially you're, you're using technique and play design to get guys open. Well, it's hard to do that all the time, all the time. Sometimes you do need like a matchup issue, whether it's agility or outright speed or jumping ability. You need to have some sort of physical matchup edge. It might change between opponents, but if you're kind of depending on technique and, and, and route running and play design all the time, Every now and then, somebody will figure you out or will have the correct matchup because you can't present them with enough dilemmas. They could, they could give the answers to all your questions you're asking them, you're challenging them with, and then you're kind of left with nothing, right? So it's, it'll be interesting to see how their passing game unfolds and if they could withstand the loss of Aaron Donald. But I think Stafford, as a veteran, he has the skills. I just, the thing about him is he should have the competitive desire but I don't know to what degree does he have that Jordan, Kobe, assassin as that Mahomes has, that Brady had, that not a lot of other guys had. Manning, to some degree, had it. He needs that because I think now they're transitioning with their cap situation off the Super Bowl world. If he wants his career to be longer, he has to be a bridge or help be part of the bridge to just get them over that cap situation, clear it out, the rebuild process. It's not as extensive as the Patriots for the next year, if things don't catapult this year. You know, he just has to put in new work and, and hold strain for the next couple of years. All right, let's see how Stafford does. Let's go on. Number seven on the list. Jordan loved Green Bay Packers. I'm surprised not so. people last year. I'm not so. You, but they surprised a lot of people last he year. He did, he did. The funny part is, it is, it is ridiculously funny how history repeats itself. Yeah. And... History repeated itself with Green Bay because their situation with Jordan Love and Aaron Rodgers was not too dissimilar to their situation with Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre. And then Jordan Love comes as an older, not a rookie, but you know, he wasn't a starter for a while. And same thing, why did you draft him when I'm still here? You know, Favre probably had the same questions with Rodgers, right? The thing is, he's not Rodgers. So I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I think people want him to be Rodgers because his story is the same. And he got to some degree the results. But he's not Rodgers. Rodgers won in 2010. And he became the starter, I think, in 2008. You see, you see, you see the, the, the math here. I don't think he's going to win a Super Bowl in, in two to three years. Right? I think he's a good but not great quarterback. And the question is, will he be able to continue to develop or will his game have a ceiling like Kirk Cousins? Which I, I, I'll admit, and this... There's not a lot of, 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 of information on him because he only had one season starter, but I fear that's what it's going to be with him. I fear that. All right, let's go. Number five. The man himself is number five, as I remember. Oh, no, sorry, number six. My, my apology. Joe Burrow. He's supposed to be great because he sh he's shown it in his rookie year. What happened last season? He fell apart. I'm... It, well, I mean, there was the injury, how he started the year and all of that, right? If, if my memory is correct. Um, and now they are probably going to have to let go of T. Higgins, so they're going to lose pieces. The, the, one of the theories is this is the year, because it seems as though that the team ownership likes Tyler, to be... Tyler Boy no longer on the team. Yeah, the team correct. ownership likes to be cheap. Yeah. So they're concerned that they might lose more pieces just because they're cheap, right? So the, the, the theory is... They might literally, mentally, emotionally go all in on this season and really push to try to go for this season. But I think ultimately, we've seen him do amazing things in the college game, right? And in his first year. And unfortunately, this might be an overreaction, but he technically has not lived up to his first rookie year, right? You can't, your reputation can't be built off of one year. 
Doesn't matter who you are. So while I think it's within him, as opposed to Jordan Love, I think it's within him. That doesn't mean he could get it out because Mac Jones regressed in a bad way. And he might not regress as bad as Mac Jones, but that doesn't mean that he can't regress a little bit at that level. You know, that's the difference between being a champion and just being one of the guys. So he needs to step up. He needs to get his guys to step up because the, the, the financial aspects of the game potentially could be going against him. They were halfway through their rebuild. They did not expect to get this success now. He goes to the Super Bowl, which means we're picking 31st in the next draft. That's not part of the equation for some teams. So uh, uh, the irony is he had his best success at what potentially was the worst possible timing in his, in his career so far because he, he kind of set himself up for things to be more difficult in certain ways. He, doesn't, he didn't have a, a first, second, or third round pick coming down the pipe the year after him to help him out. You know, so he and Jamar Chase have to carry more of the load. All right, we're gonna take a short break. Take a short break, let's take a short break, gentlemen. When we come back, we continue. We are talking NFL. We will be back here on WESN. Welcome back, welcome back. We continue to celebrate the success of Trian Bagos, Akeem Stewart. Trian Bagos, Akeem Stewart getting a silver medal in the Paralympics out there in Paris. Sean Michael Small. Well, I, I've heard we have some um, new information to show, and I'm actually quite anticipating because I haven't seen it yet, so I would love to see it. All right, let's go. is uh, uh, Trent Bagos, uh, Akeem Stewart here. Soon he'll be collecting his medal. It's silver medal for Trinidad and Tobago in the discuss. Let's watch it and enjoy it, Sean Michael Small. Certainly a great occasion for all of us here in Trinidad and Tobago. And long may it continue. I think, that, 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 I think that's the opinion of everyone. And long indeed may it continue for Trinidad and Tobago. This is the sort of success we want in to, from our athletes. And he's doing it, doing it his way, not and, easy. And when you look at the, the distances traveled, he had some, he had a pretty good cushion between him and the bronze medal. And he was maybe about a meter, a meter and a half behind the, the, the gold medal. Yes. A lot closer to the gold medal winner, you know? And, 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 and I guess I'm not entirely sure that I don't know the sport, but I do wonder if that comment on yes. if the conditions, you, you, this, this, you know? Correct. That's what the coach said. The coach said the conditions uh, made it uh, difficult. He felt for him to, to actually get that gold medal. He, he felt the conditions worked against him. So we'll see. We'll, we'll continue to monitor it, obviously. But the most good, the good news is, there he is, people. Akeem Stewart waving to the crowd out there in Paris as he's about to collect his silver medal here. His silver medal for Trinidad and Tobago, making all of us proud here. Akeem Stewart, a silver medal in the discuss. And, and it, uh, what the other interesting point is, you know, there he is. There's two Americans up on the podium with him. Those are, th th they're from the big boy countries with the big programs and the big money. And here we have little, little Trinidad and Tobago, you know, figuratively speaking, kind of, he's, he's kind of, uh, rhetorically, it's, it's almost like if he is disadvantaged with regards to resources, I would imagine, and support, uh, as much as his coach and his teammates and, his, and, 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 and the people in his corner who are in his corner support yeah. him. You know, I do wonder, uh, although let's not take it for granted, I don't know what adversity these Americans had, but one would imagine yeah. that, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit no, proud and, when and, in and, a field where big country, he's from the little country, but he did it. Correct, 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 correct. We got to say congratulations to him and congratulations to all of his team, those who wronged him and those who would, of course, be ensuring that well, he, he, he gave of his best well, as he of always course, does. Congratulations to his coach as well. Yes. Right? Yeah, you yeah, know, we it, take it, it for team, granted. It, the team, the team, yeah. This, this sort of thing. And let, let's make no mistake, folks. Our country is still one of those countries that it's not that well known. Yeah. You know, yeah, do they yeah, know yeah. us? Do they know our flag? Yes, Nicki Minaj tries. 
Montano, Marshall Montano, at times he's been exposed um, internationally to international audiences. They try our athletes. There's our flag, you know? people. There's our flag against the American flags. American and look, say. and I was afraid. I mean, granted, the whole stadium is not full, but I was afraid that there would have been a sparse crowd. But there's, there's, a, there's a respectable crowd Good there. Crowd out there. Let them see our colors. Yes, and so there's our flag. The Trinidad Tobago flag is up. It's up there, as you all seen it here on WESN. Although, although I find the third place flag looks like it's a little bit higher. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little bit higher than our flag. What's up with that? What's yeah, up with that? It does look that way. Actually. I know, it right? Does, maybe it's the angle. Maybe it's the angle, Sean. Maybe I hope it's the angle. angle. It's it better it's, be the angle, yeah, Maybe it's the angle. Maybe it's the angle. So you know the trainees, when they see that, yeah, you know, what you know. less ones. But, he, but he, he does look bigger than the, the, than the, than the two Americans here he himself. True. Does look bigger than the two Americans. And as I just said, Sean, you can imagine the amount of investment that the Americans would I mean, have look, made look into look their team. Crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, granted. And look, that's a very good crowd, That's Sean. a good crowd. Not all ath American athletes have a whole machine behind them. Yes. But there's, yes. some, there's some minimal basics yes. for the American Olympic program, right? They're going to they're gonna have some basic support that I don't know if our athletes do. So, which makes not just what Akeem did, but what yeah. his coaching team, his Correct. coach did, all the more special with regards to preparing him so that, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's totally sometimes I wonder, like, you know, how do they know what to tell these athletes? Because there's always, when it, when it comes time for competition, you know, there comes a point in time when you're like, well, you don't want to tell them too much because they might overthink. At some point, they just have to execute, you know? You, you need to peek at this one moment in time. And he was close. Yeah, he seemed, close. It seemed like he was close. All we needed was close. a little bit of luck. It could have been yeah, gold. Yeah, it would have been. All right, let's continue. We're talking NFL quarterback. We're going back to the NFL. When we left, we were going up to number five. Let's go to position number five, the NFL quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson. A lot more was expected. He'll be playing tonight, though. So, so Sean. He'll be playing tonight, but Kansas City is his kryptonite. Yeah. Right? I don't necessarily know why. They're supposed to be run the ball. This is what their identity is traditionally, how they play the game. We run the ball, we stop the run. Great defense, right? And then what Flacco gave you in the deep passing game back in the day, what Lamar gives you in both the deep passing game, but also with his ability to evade pressure, right? And I think he should have the touch for the short and intermediate game, depending on to the extent he develops it. To be fair, Jordan said he didn't want to work on his threes because if he did that, it'll take away from his inside game, right? So to what extent could he work on everything? It's, it's not going to be easy. But he had all the tools. And they should have had the correct formula to beat the Chiefs, which is run the ball. And they didn't do that. And I think it's a mistake. Here, here's the thing. And I, and I thought about this more, right? There are all these good quarterbacks coming from college, and they're doing so well. Look at CJ Stroud last year, and, and, and the guy from the Colts, um, Anthony Richardson. You know what? Not all of them look as though they play a pro game. Because the college game, what it did to pro defenses when it was new, it caused you to give pro-style defenses, especially when the rules made it more difficult to be physical with the offense. It made it easy to give the defenses dilemmas that they had no easy answer to. But I think last year the defenses caught up. Last year they caught up, and now what happens is, and Tom Brady is, I think, who clued me in on this, right? Because he said, we've watered down the game. We've brought this college game into our league, and it's easy. It allows these college quarterbacks to play sooner, but they don't necessarily develop all the skills, like what he and Manning and Marino and Elway used to win at the highest level. So they don't advance as pocket passers. So now, you made the game easier for them so they could play. What does that imply? They play an easy way. Mm -hmm. It's not a demanding style. The, the dilemmas that you force the defense to have to answer is inherent due to very specific aspects of the system of the run-pass option. Once you could have a defense that could solve those questions, what do you fall back on? Because you're, you're kind of attempting on a cheese. You're trying to cheese your way to a win when you think about it. You're not actually doing advanced work to say, our skill is going to force you into dilemmas, right? We're going to use supreme high-level skill. Lamar has both, I believe, the physical ability and the mental ability so to how, do it. So how does he get a wrong, this kryptonite that he described? Can tonight I, be an example for him? I think one of the things is, 
it's not the run pass option. You have to be careful for falling into that trap because one of, one of the tendencies is the quarterback, if you give him the option, he'll kind of do what he feels he wants to do. Whereas what you really need to do is scout, check your matchups, have your pocket passing plays, have your run fakes from the pocket, from your drop backs, like do all of those old school works so that you have a wider variety of tools because the Chiefs have a great defense. And if all you depend on Lamar Jackson to be Lamar Jackson and he's gonna run around the field and do some kind of magic, their defense is good enough to say no, right? They, they, got, they got the guy from Tennessee, the running back, um, the big, the big Derrick Henry. Big, big, big back, right? I suspect, and, and I guess, I, okay, I'll save that for the prediction later, right? Yes. But with regards to Lamar, he has to learn not just how to rely on his running game, but how to rely on a pro-style running game so, and integrate that into a pro-style passing game. He has to develop as a complete passer. He would have, as, as, as mentioned there... And be patient. Right. Uh, he would have claimed the MVP award. Do you feel in his mind, because it's not the first time I think he would have got that award, do you feel in his, his mind he would still feel that job not done? You see, one of the things that I always wondered was what happened to um, Cam Newton's development. Because yeah. he had an MVP season. <clears throat> he never, I don't think Cam Newton had as much touch as Lamar. But Cam Newton had leadership qualities, personality, physical gifts. He, he, you know, he, he should have been a great, he should have been a better quarterback than he was. Should have had better results. He should have had better results. Right. Now, part of that is not his fault. When the team kind of tells you to just do a thing, you, you, it's not as though he came up in that style, so he's going to go with what he knows, right? And to some degree, that could have been to his detriment. It's a similar thing to Lamar. You have it right there. Is he a high-volume passer when they need him to be? And if you're going to go in your run-pass option, to some extent, it, it, it pigeonholes your playbook just a little bit, right? And to what degree is he really developing as someone who can drop back or from the shotgun, but also take a drop back so you can have better run fakes out of the I formation, the 12 or the 21 formation. Drop back, right? And scan the field. Read the defense, right? It's, you, ha you have to, it's like a fighter when the fight slows down for him, right? And he could have good defense like Floyd Mayweather. Right? And it's not like just happening too fast and he can't keep up. He has to be able to, be, to look, scan the field, process everything to make the correct decision so, and be patient about it. It's, I don't care how strong your arm is. A good defense is not going to be open for the long bomb every time. You have, to be, you have to have the judgment to know when to look for it, see it quickly, and take the, the, the long shot. But you have to have the patience to settle for the short passes and work your way up the field because no long bomb passer has ever really sustained a high volume passing game, right? To break records and to carry a team in that manner, except maybe Brett Favre. And, he, and passers like that, they could just as easily lose you the game with an interception, a deep interception, as they could win in the game. That's a gambling type of mentality. He needs to be more consistent. Mahomes last year showed, hey, I have all the tools, and that, at the end of the day, his career will always be compared to Mahomes. Unfortunately. And he has to be able yeah. to improve to compete. Well, he, know, he knows what he has to do. All right, let's move on. Number four, Josh Allen, the, 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 the Buffalo Bills, the perennial, you know, never hopers. And, and he's one of those guys. He's one of those guys where, I don't know, I think it's a lack of patience to some degree. He doesn't take what the defense gives him. Yeah. And when he does that, you get turnovers. But also, I, I always find it strange. You can almost see it in the photo there. It, like it, the fear of God is it, in his eyes it, sometimes, it, it, right? It, it, yeah. And the thing is, ironically speaking, this is, this, is, this is no sarcasm, right? Because usually you say as an athlete, you know, the white boys are not as good as, as, as the African Americans. But legit speaking, physically, he is probably a better course prospect, a quarterback prospect than Lamar Jackson because he has greater height, which means that he could do certain things in a crowded pocket. He has more size to deal with people trying to pull him down to the ground, right? Lamar has to just, Lamar has to out-talent 
His Lamar's build is so slight. It's amazing what he could do. He has to. He uses his incredible skills to compensate for the fact that he doesn't have the size to shrug off defenders from pulling him down. Allen has speed and size and arm strength and all the physical tools. I don't know if he has it all there mentally either, right? He is. He is kind of like Jalen Hurts for me. He's more talented than Jalen Hurts, but he's even less proven than Jalen Hurts. So is it, he did look better last year than the year before. The year before, I expected him to fail spectacularly, and they right. failed spectacularly. Right. He did look better last year. But all of these guys, um, Lamar, 27, him, 28, this are their, these are their prime years, right? This is when their development is supposed to peak, because this is where physical ability meets mental development. And he did trend ever so slightly upwards last year. He has a lot to prove as well, because he's just like Lamar. These guys in the AFC, right? Outside of maybe Burroughs, maybe Burroughs, because Burroughs is a little bit younger, right? These guys in AFC in 27, 28, 29, they're all going to be tied together. And if he doesn't want to be like all of the players that had to live in Michael Jordan's shadow, all of the guys that had to live in Tom Brady's shadow, he has to figure out a way to not just hope that Mahomes gets injured and that's how he's going to win a Super Bowl. He has to overcome, he has to get the mental development there to be the reason why they win, even if everything falls apart. And, and, and Does sad. he have it? Does he have it? Does he have the team around him? Does he have it? He usually does. He, has a be he had a better team than Burroughs. He might have had a better team in the last couple of years each year than Burroughs did the year Burroughs went to the Super Bowl. That's why I could look at Burroughs and say it was only one year, but he proved something to the world when he did it. He, he, I think he needs to prove something to himself. Because I don't know if he has the con like Jackson, I think, has the confidence when he plays most of the time. I don't know if Allen has confidence in big games. I don't. When he knows that he's going to win, I think he plays with confidence because it's easy. But when it's a near pair and the thing is in doubt, I don't know if he really, really wants it, if he really is going to push fair aside and execute. All right. Let's go. Now, position number three, according to this list. Brock Purdy, San Francisco 49ers. I'm not as high on him as I was last year, right? He has intangibles. That's cool. The thing about it is he is smaller than Brady. He's smaller than Manning, right? Neither of whom were the most athletic quarterbacks in their time, right? He's obviously smaller than Roethlisberger. So he has to be efficient. He doesn't have the arm strength. He has good arm strength, but not great arm strength. Same thing what they said about Brady. Has to be efficient. Has to, has to, has to. He had the kind of weapons he had last year, if Brady or Manning had in their prime. Now, to be fair, he, he was in his second year, second year, right? So in their primes, or even maybe in Brady's like, second year, right? That, 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 the level of talent he had around him, it, it made me wonder, what was the thing that wasn't clicking? Because you can't, you can't have a five-headed monster, and one gets injured, and all of a sudden, the wheels just completely fall off. And that's what it seemed like when McCaffrey or, or Debo Samuel got, um, were out, right? You, you, you mean to tell me that Ayuk and Kittle, right, and, and, and I can't remember who, I think it was the, the, the fullback, like they weren't enough against so many teams you had to face? They have some teams that have one weapon and their offense works. You have four to five. You lose one, the whole thing falls apart. That doesn't make sense to me. So he has, I think, he kind of has to now... As much as he kind of proved, yes, he could play well, you know, he does have to prove that, look, a lot of guys right now could play well. He has to prove that he could really now, when it comes to how do you win the game, how do you play, how do you meet the defense and defeat the defense, I think he has to prove now that, yeah, I, my, mentally now, my decision making, my, my speed of decision making, the effectiveness can, I have a Ferrari and I'm driving it like if I have, you know, a Volkswagen Beetle. I, uh, you know, I have, a, I have a wagon. That doesn't make sense, you know? The car is fast. The driver now needs to be an F1 driver, not, you know, a go-kart league driver. All right, let's go. Number two on the list here. CJ Stout, Houston Texan. Surprise, he's so high up, Sean. The thing is, I always say rookies, I, or, or quarterbacks that don't have film on them, when they come out and they play for, for a year, they look really good because there's no film on them. Our defense can't break them down. Once you get film on a quarterback, whoo boy, can you break them down. In fact, I just saw 
I just saw Belichick describe an Ed Reed play against Manning. Great quarterback, right? Yeah. Ed Reed saw one tell. When he pumps fakes in a direction, that's the direction he's going to throw. So Ed Reed knew, I'm going to turn my back. I'm not even looking at him because I know what he's going to do. So I'm going to run as if I'm going one way. And then I'm going to auto, I'm just, I know I'm going to turn. I don't need to see any more of what he's going to do. I know what he's going to do. I'm going to turn. And I intercept the ball because I reached the spot before the receiver reached the spot because I knew exactly what he was going to do. I didn't need to look at him anymore because I scouted that tell on film. So now he has a year of film on him. And he, obviously, he's not going to have the most advanced development in that year. Yes. Can he develop further so he doesn't have to rely on some of the rookie tendencies that he was doing where things weren't all that perfect or all that um, executed all that brilliantly? that would easily be picked apart, can he develop? The thing is, how he came out of the cannon last year, it was spectacular. Because at least with Borough, he had Chase, there was talent around him, he was a national champion. It, it, yes, going to the Super Bowl was the surprising part, but being successful wasn't necessarily all that surprising. But the Texans were not a good team, and Stroud got them to the divisional championship. They, they, I believe, if my memory says correct, they beat the Jaguars for division. I did not see that coming. Did not expect that at all. Here comes the rookie, right? His game is complete, or at least it appears to be complete. It appears to be more complete than Lamar's. He has similar talents to Josh Allen. He appears to be mentally a bit more sure of himself than Josh Allen as a rookie. So there's a part of me that says he shouldn't be number two. He's, this is his second year. But then, and, and he might regress. Right? Hit the rookie wall the next year, you know, think it might just get too much for him, right? Defenses figure it out. They, they, they start to pick on him. We ain't going to let you do to what you did to those teams last year. We ain't going to let you do that to, us, that to us this year. We have a little bit too much pride in that, right? But at a time when defenses were figuring out quarterbacks last year, which was, which was fun for me to see, the pendulum swing the other way, he had success. So I could see there is a good argument with regards to him being number two, right? It's, it's, it's a moment. It's, it's an analysis I based on the moment. I don't see it, though. I, I'm, well, I'm biased, but I don't see it. I, right. But I think, really and truly, if you wanted to say, given the body of work, does he earn to be considered the number two quarterback in the NFL right now? No. No. I it is it is a yeah. it is a situation of to some extent being trapped in the moment. But 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 does it also suggest, Sean, the gap between the the man who we all know will be number one and the others? It's so wide that someone could leap above another person. I think because I would have thought Lamar Jackson would have been number two. Here's the thing. I think it just shows how disappointing all those guys were last year. All right. All yeah, those but, guys but, but last year. But Lamar would have can, can cannot have been considered. Disappointing, and he had won the MVP. I think for him to win the MVP last year and to be relegated to number five, what has he done to deserve that? Lost in the playoffs badly. I know. If he lost in the playoffs, but he played well, that's different. But when he lose one game, listen, listen. But he and, but you were the MVP but for he the whole keep, season. But he keeps losing like this. Yeah. Okay, let me put it this way: at the end of the day, Harden has been in the MVP race. Are you, how many times have Hard, has James Harden been considered the best no, player no, in the no. NBA? No, no, no. All right, all right. right? Point noted. But a different sport, but point noted. Right. To me, a lot of these guys are like a James Harden, right? And, and, and the thing is, Mahomes to me is like MJ. All right, so let's go, to, let, let's go straight to Mahomes. Let's go straight, right. Right, number one is Mahomes. Let's go to Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. Expected so, number one. So Go the ahead. expectation was he's the next Aaron Rodgers. No, he's the next Tom Brady because right. he has the intangibles. Yeah. He just happens to have all the physical gifts too. But the physical gifts would not have gotten him the Super Bowl last year. It's the intangibles. It's his development. It's his willingness to put in the work to increase his skill set. He's not just the guy that throws the ball deep to Tyreek Hill. We lost Tyreek Hill. And you know what? Sometimes when you take the easy way out for an athlete and they have to learn how to do things the hard way, they improve. You force the improvement. It doesn't always work. It's not necessarily always healthy, but that's what I believe happened here. It did not help that all of those guys were dropping the deep balls all the time. And one could argue in the playoffs, they got a lucky when they made the catches they needed to make. But he is the guy. The thing is, I think Mahomes looks so much head and shoulders about everybody because he probably is good enough 
to compete in the era when Brady and Manning and, and Drew Brees and Rodgers in his prime competed. I don't know if the rest of these guys are because defense was different then. And they might not have gotten away with the kind of things that they could get away with. No, I think he can. I think he could play all eras. I think he could stand up to anybody. His resume already puts him on the Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks in professional sports media, at least in some circles, right? And the other definitely, guys... Definitely, And the other guys, right, in the era of LeBron James and, 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 and KD, right, they are not even that. No. They are not even that. They are maybe a James Harden. Maybe a James Harden. Maybe something worse than that, right? Kevin Durant, I don't, I don't regard highly. I always found he was, you know, he, he needed help to win. He, he was not an assassin. I, I say LeBron is definitely, to me, a much better player than Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant will, for me, never be in that conversation. In the football conversation, Mahomes is in that conversation. And none of his peers, none of his peers, come even close to sniffing that conversation. And what makes it worse with regards to the disappointment of the field is that they, we keep hearing all the time, it's so easy to score points in the modern NFL. It's so easy for the offense in the modern NFL because back in the day, if, listen, they knew, we play in the Ravens. If I throw the ball, if Brady throws the ball in the middle, Welko or Edelman will be knocked out of the game by Ray Lewis. It is not a question of if, it is a question of when I do that, it will happen, the end. And now, for you to play safety in the NFL, to guard the middle, you feel like how it used to be done, be essentially you have to budget enough money to pay your fines. Because you're gonna get fined a lot if you wanna play physically in the middle of the field. And that makes it so much more easier for these teams to play the game. So, Mahomes has literally no competition. I cannot fault him at this point in his career. If he says he's chasing Brady, I say he is more than justified for saying that. He has already surpassed Hall of Famers. There is no other Hall of Famer in his peer group, none whatsoever, right? They, 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 to me, a lot of questions, because this list, just so you know, this list is of what? What is this list of? Not this just the, 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 the rankings of the top 10 This is top 10 quarterbacks? In, in their opinion. This in is their the opinion, right? Now, I don't know, is this a list? Because Dan Olofsky had a similar list of nine elite quarterbacks. Okay. And when he said that, I could have all but fallen off the chair. Now, because, I'm not going to say elite. I'm going to say the top. Right. Because there is one surefire elite. And then there are maybe two guys that you can make an argument for. And that's Burroughs and, and, in my opinion, Stafford. And it's not a surefire argument whatsoever, right? If, yes. if, if you want to debate it, you could easily win that argument, in my opinion, especially for Stafford. I'll give you that, right? Burroughs should be elite. But should be and is, is two different things. Correct, correct. So I think now, he, like this year, he has, this is why I think at the end of this year, he has a legitimate chance. And of course, the season is long, it could change. But unless some of these other guys show us something, at least from the AFC, because if they kind of play their style of soft football and crumble under pressure, right, and don't appear in the playoffs like a James Harden, well, it's going to be too easy. He doesn't even have, I mean, he's probably going to win his division, but he doesn't even have to win his division. They could, they could take a measured place because they've been through the Super Bowl twice in the last two years. They have fatigue on their bodies now, right? So they could take their time. They could drop a few more games. They just need 11 to 12 wins. They just need to get into the playoffs and they could peak at the right time at the end of the season and win it all. All right, we'll take our last break. When we come back, Sean Michael Small will give us his predictions on the various winners of the divisions on this, the NFL show. Remember, every week, most likely on a Thursday, it could be a Wednesday, it all depends on time, but every week, Sean Michael Small will join me here on WESN for our NFL recap, preview, review, and we will talk all about the NFL leading up to the 2025 Super Bowl. Take a short break, we'll be back. Welcome back, welcome back. Well, people, as we told you here on WESN, great news today in Trinidad and Tobago because Akeem Stewart has done it again for Trinidad and Tobago. He has stepped forward and made Trian Tobago proud with a silver medal in the discus. He's joined us here all the way from Paris. He's joined us all the way from Paris. Akim, congratulations. 
Hello? Akim, congratulations Hello. to you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Akim, tell us, tell us how it feels. How it, how, tell us about the day and about the feeling. Give us a little idea. Give the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, the feeling is, is great. You know, um, I had a rough season and a rough couple of weeks leading up to the championship. But I'm too, I'm too late thankful to come out here and, you know, middle of my country and put my country on the map yet again. So I'm happy. Tell us about today. I know when we spoke with the chef de mission, Mickey Ruben, he mentioned the weather conditions. The weather conditions were not the best. Tell us about today and the discuss. All right, so it, it was um, wet. It had a main factor why I didn't show much further. But um, at the end of the day, we had to adapt as athletes. So I had that was my best performance. So I season best, so I was truly thanked. I was still pleased with All right, so we, we may have just lost him for a short while. Hopefully, he'll rejoin us again shortly. Trying to see if we can reconnect with him. But we know that, of course, we're season talking the best. season best done by Akeem Stewart here. Season best done by Akeem Stewart as we lost him there for a short while. Trying to see if we can reconnect with him and get back on to him and maybe be able to talk to him. So let me, let me, let me, let me try again, people, because I remember, remember this is live television here, live television. We're going to try to see if we can reconnect. Akim, are you hearing us better now? Are you hearing us better? Akim? Yeah. Right. So, Akim, yes, you mentioned a season best. Um, despite the weather. Despite the weather. Tell us about the conditions over there. T explain to the people how you felt going in, how, and in terms of when they got the silver medal. G describe it to us as best you can. Um, well, this performance, this championship was the performance. Um, he have kidney failure, and he's been the one that been inspiring me to become a athlete and a better version of myself. You know, so this performance was dedicated to him, and yeah, I just feel pretty much happy that I got a medal. Yeah. What do you want to tell the people of Trinidad and Tobago? We we are watch. Thanks to Mickey Rubin, we watched you call. Um, um, and we're watching it right now. Collect your medal and you waved your hand. How do you feel when you collect that silver medal? I felt a sense of pride and I must say thanks to everyone from Trinidad and Tobago who supported me in the season and I appreciate you guys. And what do you want to tell the people of Trinidad and Tobago? Because you brought home, you made us all proud yet again, not for the first time, obviously. Uh, Akeem, what do you want to tell the people of Trinidad and Tobago? Um, thanks for the support and continue supporting the local athletes. Yeah. What's what's next for Akeem Stewart? Coming back home and get some good home cooked food. What's next? Um, just um therapy and recovery. Work on my recovery and relax for the rest of the season. So I, I you know, you know, Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago is known to party. Are you going to party tonight? Are you going to party and celebrate tonight? No, nah, you don't want to party in here. <laughs> <laughs> just, we, just we have and, and relax. All right. Akeem, congratulations. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, I know you must want to send out a message to your family and your friends. What do you want to tell your family and friends in Trinidad? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, what message do you want to send out to your family and friends in Trinidad? What message do you want to pass on? Um, thanks for the continued support and... I hope I made you guys proud. You did, you did. You made all of us proud. And what do you want to tell Tobago? What part of Tobago? What do, what do you want to tell Tobago? Um, I don't really have not much to say, but thanks to all my villagers and everyone that have been supporting me during the season. Special thanks to um, Charlie Irvin, that is my neighbor and friend, childhood friend. You know, and um, Kelton Thomas and everyone that supported me on my journey this season. I appreciate you guys. And we appreciate you. Thank to you and your coach, Mickey Ruben, and all of those involved. Safe travels back to Trinidad and Tobago, yeah. and you have done made us proud yet again. So thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. All right, people. Thank you very much. Thanks. That was, of course, the man himself, Akeem Siot. Yeah, season best, similar to, I believe, um, Jareem Richards. Yes, yeah, right? season best. Yeah. And, and, and I think Keshawn was, I, I can't remember if it was his season best, but it was up there for him as well. Yes, yeah. You know, so our guys, I mean, they did their job. They peaked for at Keshawn, the right time. It was time. also his season best for Keshawn as for well. For Keshawn, right, exactly. Yeah. They peaked at the right time. To some extent, it's very hard to ask guys 
to do more than that. So, and luckily, we, 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 you know, Akeem was successful in, in his go around, thankfully. All right, people, uh, let's go. We're still staying on the NFL. It's been a mixed program, but we're, we have no choice. Let's go to the NFL. Let's go to the divisions. We put them up on the screen, and then we'll ask Sean to give his predictions. So let's have a look at all of the divisions. Sean, let's start in the NFC North. Who's going to win? Right now, Caleb Williams is the hype. It's, it's, it's between him and Detroit. So um, I, I, from what I've heard, he hasn't played a pro game yet. He's played preseason, but that's, that doesn't count. Right, in my opinion, uh, so many times you get false positives in preseason. I do expect the Bears to be able to do well with Kalen Williams. He seems to be the real deal because, again, it's not just the physical gifts. He, he might have the, the mental gifts and the development too, but unlike Mahomes, he has to go through the process. They call him the next Mahomes. We'll see. Maybe that's too much on the young man, but. He, he, half of Mahomes is still one and a half rings, so that's not bad for, 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 for a rookie to have that so potential. you pick Chicago Bears? Yeah, I'll, I'll pick the Bears. I don't know if I like the Lions and their, and their defense, but, I mean, it should be close up there. Campbell is a great coach, and his team is buying in a lot. They, he, they've changed the culture a lot. Jared Goff is able to live up to his expectations of his billing being a high round pick. So, you know, hopefully, I think, yes, a former number one pick, so... I don't think the Packers, are the, well, the Vikings definitely. Everybody says they're, they're last, and there's no real good reason. Sam Donald's not the answer. Can the Packers do damage? Again, I'm not high on Jordan Love. All right. New NFT East. Yeah. Um, no to the Giants. I don't know what he read about the Commanders, um, but with regards to the Cowboys, the Cowboys, Eagles, that's interesting. Right? I'm not too sure if this is last year's results. No, 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 no. This no, isn't, right? No, no, this is people, their predictions. This, no, this is, no, 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 because the Patriots being 13 and 3. This, yeah. this, 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 this is, this, these are some old standings. But yeah. with that said, we'll just yeah. use the, yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah, just the use team. the teams, right? Yeah, teams, yeah. It's between the Eagles and the Cowboys. It's a difficult position. I think the football person in me wants to see the Eagles because I don't want to give the Cowboys credit because I think they are too dysfunctional of an organization. But, the problem is, in the regular season, they tend to do well. So to discount them uh, in the regular season record, it's very difficult to do, right? But there's a, there's a renewed controversy with renewing Dak Prescott's contract for the second time, right? He's not the answer. And there's a concern. They're spending so much money on their best players. They're going to be so top-heavy. So much of their cap is going there. They're not going to have potentially enough money to fill out the roster. I think the Eagles' long term is, is definitely in a better position. This year, it's a toss-up. I would pick the Eagles just because I want to pick the Eagles. I prefer to pick the All Eagles. All right. NFC South, who are you picking? They say Atlanta is, is positioned to, to win the division. I don't know about that. And the other team in contention is the Buccaneers. I actually, this may be a, a, a little Baker bit Baker Mayfield? A, this may be a... Well, I mean, the other teams... Baker Mayfield Actually, is, I'll say this. It's Tampa Bay Buccaneers, for the, those of you who don't the, know. The, the, problem is, the problem is the New Orleans Saints, um, they have their car, but that team, and I think this comes ever since like the 2010s with Sean Payton, they kind of rarely try to play games with the cap, and they've pushed back cap hits and done all kind of things. So now, once again, and it seems like every few years they're in this position more than any other team i know it's almost like if i know them this is what they're famous for in my mind they are trying to deal with 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 um cap hits that are that are that are delayed and it's affecting the roster now so i don't like any of the teams here to be honest bucks for nostalgia <laughs> i'll pick um i'm I, i'm not sold on the falcons on this you're situation. picking baker mayfield that's what i'm asking you it's it's uh, it's reluctantly all right, let's go. NFC West. He didn't want to play off game last year. I, know, I like him. I like him. NFC West. West. Um, to me, it's. I don't like Kyler Murray. I've said that already on the I show. Know you said that. Uh, right. Geno Smith, he's not the answer. Right. So that's the Arizona Cardinals down. That's the Seahawks so down. Pretty. So it's Purdy and Stafford. And I'll yeah. be honest, right now, Purdy has more to prove for me to, for me to pick him over Stafford. All right. The, the, the 49ers have to prove more to me for me to pick them over the Rams. Kyle Shanahan should be the better coach, but McVay, he has the ring. He is a good coach as well, right? And I think last year, it actually caused me to kind of look at Shanahan and, and, and I had to give some pause. It's like, does he have limits? 
because he's been part of great teams, but not winning teams, not championship winning teams. So I'll pick the Rams over the 49ers. The 49ers have to prove it to me that they could beat the Rams. I'll pick the Rams over them. All right, let's go to the AFC West, as we already did, AFC West. Okay, the Chiefs win this. That's, that's, not, that's not even close. This is not a discussion. Yeah. Right? Harbour is with the, with the Chargers. Jim Harbour, right? Can he turn the program around? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sold on Justin Herbert. I'll ask you what I say, Justin Herbert. The, um, the, the Chargers quarterback is an elite quarterback. I'm like, why? Why is he elite? Yes, he has the physical talent, but he seems like physically talented like Josh Allen, worst version of Josh Allen, and Josh Allen hasn't won anything either. So why am I going to rank him there? Physical talent alone does not make you elite. So this one is easy. It's the Chiefs all day, all night. To me, I think the other three teams could potentially be irrelevant, but we'll see. There's, there's a lot of hope for Bo Nix in Denver, so we'll see. There's hope for all these teams, but I think Kansas City runs over this. If, okay, right, coming to the end, AFC South. I hate to say this. It's between the Jaguars and the Texans. I'll hedge my bets. I want to pick the Jaguars because I don't know if Stroud can maintain this for another year. And I'll, I'll just leave it there. All Titans right. have fallen off. AFC East? I like the Bills. Um, I appreciate the Miami head coach, Mike McDaniels, but I, I like the Bills for their talent. I don't know if they could go beyond winning division. But yeah, and the Patriots, they're, they're last, unfortunately. And the last, last but not least, AFC North. This one is tough. The Ravens have the Bengals number. I want to pick the Bengals. I don't like how the Ravens went out last year. That was unforced errors. They underplayed, right? But they, they, they know how to deal with their division, so they should win this division as well. Russell Wilson is in Pittsburgh. Russell Wilson is not the answer for Pittsburgh. Although with Tomlin, he could revive his career, but I, 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 he's not the long-term solution. And, All right. and the Browns, they're done. Deshaun Watson, they need to figure out a way to move on, but they have... Uh, I think it's like 80-something million dollars left on that contract or 100-something million dollars left on that contract of dead money. Thank you very much, Sean Michael Small. It's been a very busy afternoon for us. Thankfully, we started a little bit late, and by starting a little bit late, it allowed us the chance to have exclusive discussion with Mickey Rubin and Akeem Stewart. So everything works for a reason. Mm. Otherwise, we would not have been able to have so much You would have known. We would have, we would have known. We would have been on air. We would have been on air. So I must thank Josh. Let me thank Josh. And I don't often say this to Sule, Thanks to Sule, nevertheless, that we were able to get these two things in. And of course, the hardworking Neil. And we start there with the hardworking Neil, Rodney, um, Josh, who do, is doing a lot, a lot of work. He's doing the work with the promos that he was seen running for this program. And of course, Burke is back. Burke is back. He's back. All right. Well, he's, he's not, back in Trinidad. Not today. here. Not here. All right. All right. So he is back indeed. indeed. Ryan, we're, we're, we're glad to have him back, certainly. Keaton, Sean Michael Small, who's here with me. And of course, the hardworking Mael. I know he's not here with us right now at this time. And of course, Neil doubling up. But many thanks, Akeem Stewart. Yes. The Tobago. We have one Tobago man with us here doing us proud. Hold on. And we have another Tobago man out there. Disclaimer to all the Tobagonians watching, right? I understand if you will take umbrage to um, Andre calling me Tobagonian. I do not agree calling myself to begonian so please if you have any issues with what he's saying take it up with him he right. that one yes, over yes. there right so and so all right feel free to do that people whenever you get a chance but nevertheless must thank sir akim stewart it's yes. been our pleasure. and mickey rubin because of mickey rubin we were able to talk to mickey rubin get the inside track and then hear from akim stewart he doesn't like to talk as you heard yeah, he really yeah. doesn't like to talk so this was already a great chance for us to get this discussion with him, Akeem Stewart. I, I just, I just want to say it again. When our athletes are doing their season best in the Olympics, folks, they are putting in the effort. They are putting in the work. We should match that effort. Definitely. And again, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>